So uh, before I start my address, I would like just to uh, uh, say a few remarks about Russia as you raised an important topic. I think that uh, people from many countries came here today and gathered to the, uh, together here. And 15 years ago, Russia wouldn't have been here because it was a democracy. It was a flawed democracy, but it was a democracy. It was not perfect democracy. We didn't have political prisoners in Russia. Now we have more than 100 political prisoners, and Russia is an authoritarian regime. And that's very sad that in only 15 years, Russia has become a truly authoritarian regime with political prisoners and political repressions. And that's why I think that's an issue, and the United Nations has to uh, pay attention to what's going on in Russia. I don't have a lot of time to dwell on it. I hope tomorrow we'll be more eloquent together with Anastasia Zotova. I was asked to say a few words about myself. So I'm uh, the eldest daughter of Boris Nemtsov, Russian opposition liberal politician uh, who was killed almost two years ago on the 27th of February in 2015 in Moscow in the city center on Bolshoi Moskvaretsky Bridge, just 200 meters in front of the Kremlin walls. Uh, he, uh, the case has not been yet fully solved, and uh, I have uh, very little hope that it will be solved under Putin's leadership. Uh, it has been solved only partly, and unfortunately, currently, we don't have any international mechanisms uh, to even control the investigation. We have one uh, within the uh, Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, but it's I think it's very dysfunctional because they haven't still appointed a special reporter on, uh, on my father's case and it's deliberately done uh, because the president of, uh, of the PASIR, uh, Pedro Agramunt, uh, doesn't want to uh, have bad relations with Vladimir Putin. Uh, so I was a journalist in Russia. I worked for a privately owned channel, RBC. Uh, and I have never been uh, an active, uh, uh, an activist, a civil activist, or a politician. I led a normal life, like many people uh, did, and like many people do. Uh, and I thought my father was the one responsible for human rights in Russia and for fighting for democracy, and I fully supported him. Uh, and my father used to say, you know, if you want to join me, you will lose your job. You have to uh, you have to make this choice. So, but when my father was assassinated, uh, my choice was very obvious and evident, and it was my moral choice. And I was ready to lose my job, uh, and I uh, I was very actively involved in the investigation, and I am involved in the in the investigation process. And the most important goal of my life right now is to keep a good memory of my father, uh, and that's why uh, I. We, together with uh, uh, my father's friends and supporters, we created the Boris Nemtsov Foundation for Freedom. Uh, as I said uh, earlier, Russia is an authoritarian regime. That's why the Boris Nemtsov Foundation is right now registered in Germany, uh, where I live and now work as a reporter for Deutsche Welle, which is an international German um, broadcaster. Uh, so we, not, we are not a big organization, uh, but we are a very active organization. Uh, and uh, besides from keeping good memory of my father, uh, we have a number of projects, the Boris Nemtsov Forum to ensure Russian-European dialogue, the Boris Nemtsov Prize to praise those people who courageously fight for democratic rights in Russia. And we have a special program to support political refugees from Russia and political prisoners in Russia. Uh, and today I'm very happy that uh, we are together with Anastasia Zoto. We have a small uh, Russian delegation here, and this is a very great delegation. These are truly independent voices. I mean, Anastasia Zotova, her husband, uh, was sentenced for the first time for one-man protests. He, uh, he was sentenced to a two and a, ha and a five, uh, to a two and a half years in prison, and became a very well-known person because of uh, Anastasia Zotova and uh, her contribution. And we hope very much he will be released very soon. And what we can do for political prisoners in Russia is to raise awareness because uh, it's evident when 
a person becomes very recognized and known, he is more safe and chances are high he will be released. It was the case with Nadia Savchenko, it was the case with Petr Pavlensky, and I hope it will be the case with uh, uh, Ildar Dadin. And I think we, with Anastasia, share the same goal. We want Russia without political prisoners and free and democratic. Russia without Putin. Thank you.